Welcome to episode 122 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And today I'm asking the question, who is stressed out? We're making our way through the fog of life and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I'll tell you, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to, whether I'm talking to a business owner, whether I'm talking to a government official, whether I'm talking to my wife, other friends. The bottom line is everybody is just exhausted. Everybody is worn out. This week we were having a meeting, um, the senior leadership in my company, Congruent, and just talking about our output as a company, kind of the level of pressure and stress it seems like our people are feeling. Um, sometimes it's it's very hard to perceive. Um, well, it's easy to perceive. It's hard to understand why things are happening the way they're happening. And it's easy to, to kind of blame it on, well, we're working remote. Well, we've been working remote for almost three months now. And what is really the case is, you know, I'm convinced that um, in six months, one year, two years, whatever, we're going to see a bunch of studies released that are going to talk about the real effects that the pandemic had, shutting everything down, everybody coming home, uh, the protesting, the social unrest, the rioting, the looting, the commentary, and all of that stuff wound in together and balled up really, 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 really tight is absolutely stressing this country out. Stressing me out, stressing you out, stressing our colleagues out, stressing our families out, first of all. If you're stressed out and you don't understand why, why are you so tired? Why are you so exhausted? Well, because your whole life as you knew it has been upended. Your whole routine as you knew it has been upended. Couple that with this level of uncertainty that now exists in the world about your job or your career or your income or your kids or your school or the plans you had for the fall semester when a lot of people were going to college or parents had kids going to college or um, you were starting a business or starting a building project or investing money or about to retire and take out your investment money to live on. Regardless of who you are, where you were, what you thought you were doing in February, March came and you were no longer doing that. And then April and then May and now June. And we certainly don't know if this is the end. Most people think it isn't. Who's stressed out? Show of hands. I am. I'm not the kind of person that admits it often. Well, maybe I'll admit it, but I don't like to, to show the stress. I'm the kind of person that likes to say, no, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Guess what? We're not fine. We've been fundamentally changed. We're not fine. We've had to deal with an enormous amount of change. Force fed our relationships, even at home. Let's talk about home. You've been locked in the house with your families, your kids, your spouses, significant others. Things are changing. Guess what? You think that would fix it? Actually, in the beginning, you might think like, oh, it'll be better. We'll spend more time together. And then you realize that spending time together requires you to face all the things that were much more easily buried because you were busy. And the rent is due. And that leaves us with the question, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to decide to do with those feelings, emotions, stresses, uncertainties, maybe a little grieving, a little loss? What are we going to do about it? It's easy to look at everybody else and make them the reason 
for your pain. Make them the reason that you're unhappy. Make them the reason that you can't get it together or you can't seem to do more. And that feeling that you might have of aggression towards other people, that feeling you might have of blaming other people for your anger or your um, unhappiness, guess what? It's so hard to get past that because it is so easy to blame other people for your life. It is so easy to blame everyone else for your unsatisfying relationships. But guess what? We got to look in the mirror. I love the, the phrase and the saying I've heard it before. The only common denominator in all, in all of your unsatisfying relationships in life is you. And that's the truth. And it's a reality that I've been thinking about a lot over the last few days as we're kind of coming out, things are starting to open up. We're about to enter phase three in upstate New York. So we're reopening and life is starting to kind of get going again. And you realize that there's a lot of stress going around. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of catching up to do. There's a lot of relationship work that needs to be done. And guess what? I got to look in the mirror and say, yeah, it's, it's my fault. Not saying everything in life is my fault, but my feelings are my fault. I get to choose what I do with them. I get to choose if I exhibit patience. I get to choose if I exhibit kindness, if I exhibit um, joy, if I exhibit peace. I get to choose whether or not I exhibit those things. And sometimes situations make me just kind of lose those things. Circumstances make me forget them. Offenses make me abandon them. What I feel are my rights. What I feel are things that are entitled to me. The thing that I need in order to give something else in a relationship. I need this and then I can give that. If you would only give me this, then I could give you that. You know what? That stuff is all within my control. I always, 100% of the time, get to control how I react. You always 100% of the time, get to choose how you react to the stimulus, to the things, to the people in your life. So I'm making this episode for me as much as I'm making it for you to remind me of those things. I talk about swinging the axe, swinging the axe, swinging the axe. That tree doesn't fall unless you keep swinging. It's exhausting. It's tiring. But you can't blame the tree for not falling, can you? No. You have to keep swinging the axe. So in this kind of quick blast of a podcast, I want to acknowledge the stress. I want to acknowledge and I want you to acknowledge the things in your life that have led you to the point where you are stressed. It's okay to say you're stressed. It's okay to say internally you're torn up, you're scared, you're frightened, you're fearful, uncertain. But it is not okay to blame other people for the next steps that you take. That is not okay. That is not healthy. That is not productive. That will not make you a better person. That will make you a victim. And no one wants to be a victim if you really look at it. No one wants to be, but sometimes it's just comfortable to be. Sometimes I I say to my wife, if only you would do this, then I could do that. Guess what? I'm making myself a victim and it's stupid. Because I can completely respond a different way. I get to choose. People in my company, I get to respond. I get to choose how I respond regardless of what they do or say. So let's make healthy decisions this week. Let's acknowledge that we're stressful. Let's get a little clarity and say, oh, we went through this situation. Here's where we are on the map. And that is where we want to go. May you have clarity this week. May you take accountability and responsibility for your own feelings this week. And may we walk forward in a way that we can look back on how we acted and say, I made the right choice. It's good to spend time with you. I hope you have a great week. I hope you keep pushing through this to the point where you're not so stressed because you know that you're always, always, always in charge of your own decisions. I will talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah.